My name is Allison Mitchell. I'm here in San Jose, California, talking with Dr. Paul Inman, who is an expert in the treatment of Asherman syndrome, among other things. I'm a patient of Dr. Inman's and have had an in-office hysteroscopy for the evaluation and treatment of Asherman's. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Dr. Inman, could you tell me what is Asherman syndrome or interuterine adhesions? Asherman syndrome is scar tissue in the uterus, and um, it's not just a little bit of scar tissue where tissue sticks to uh, one spot or another. Uh, the traditional definition of Asherman syndrome is where women stop getting their periods entirely because of this or their periods become much lighter. What typically causes Asherman syndrome? Uh, the most common cause is uh, a DNC scraping the uterus uh, after someone has had a baby or someone's had a miscarriage and then repeated uh, DNCs uh, are done. It's less likely with an elective abortion, uh, more commonly with uh, repeated or aggressive, vigorous uh, scraping of the uterus after a pregnancy. Can you have Asherman syndrome if you've never had a DNC? Well, unfortunately, we're seeing uh, more Asherman syndrome caused by hysteroscopic surgery. Um, with the advent of newer instruments, people are doing procedures that may better be left on for more skillful surgeons, more experienced surgeons, and errors in judgments. Of course, it can happen uh, when it's properly done also. How is Asherman's diagnosed, and who would diagnose it? Well, the typical thing that we see is that someone's had a DNC after either a miscarriage or having a baby with retained tissue, and then they don't get their period. Uh, at that point, uh, we can use a number of things. Uh, we can use ultrasound, which can be helpful to look for the lining of the uterus. Uh, an ultrasound where we put fluid in the uterus, or an x-ray where we put fluid in the uterus. That's called a hysterosalpingogram. The gold standard is hysteroscopy, looking inside with little telescopes. Now, even in women with normal uh, periods, we may find adhesions or scar tissue in the uterus. A Formally, that's not Asherman syndrome, but it's part of the same problem. What is the treatment for Asherman's after a woman is diagnosed? Asherman's syndrome is treated hysteroscopically. The hysteroscope is a little tiny telescope uh, with a light source and a camera we can put through the cervix and see. And there are little tiny scissors that we use to cut these adhesions. People have used uh, other energy sources, such as laser, electricity, and there's some real issues with that where that can cause damage to the underlying tissue. So I prefer to use mechanical instruments with no energy source. What are benefits of having a hysteroscopy performed in the office? Well, hysteroscopy can be form performed in the office or in the operating room. Uh, first of all, women are more comfortable in the office. Um, also, there's a tremendous cost difference because uh, the major cost of these procedures is the cost of a surgical center, the operating room. Uh, if you do it in an operating room, you're going to generally have an anesthesiologist, and that can run into thousands and thousands of dollars, especially if you have to do repeated procedures. I mean, well, you've had one uh, Correct. in the office. What are your thoughts? Uh, I would much prefer to have it in the office. I was a little bit afraid at first about not being put under. I didn't know for sure that I wanted to be awake and see what was going on, but it was uh, much nicer not to have to be put completely under. The whole thing was said and done in about 20 minutes. The recovery was very minor, actually. Yeah. Now, usually we'll do uh, diagnostic hysteroscopy, just looking with a little bit of local anesthetic and uh, something like ibuprofen. If we're doing uh, longer procedures, procedures that may be involved, we'll use light sedation in the office, and, and that can make, take the edge off of it. And I, also, I think it's nice to be able to see what we're doing as we're doing it. I mean, do you feel that you have a better understanding I having watched it? I absolutely do. That? I watched it all on the camera. Yeah, it was incredible. It's much better than just waking up and saying, what did you find? Yeah, it's no longer an abstract thought. Now you're part of the process. Exactly. When would you use the surgery center? It's, when would you decide to? Well, if we're doing extensive adhesions, that's better done in a regular operating room. Um, most of the Ashermans that we're doing in the office are mild to moderate adhesions. If they're adhesions in the lower portion of the 
the uterus blocking entry, but you have a normal cavity. And we can get a pretty good idea of that on ultrasound. We'll do it in the office. And there I'll, I may actually use an abdominal ultrasound to help guide the procedure. It lowers the risk of perforation. Uh, but if there's a lot of adhesions at the top of the uterus, then I'll do it in the operating room. And, and that brings us back to the, the question of a barrier, a balloon, because uh, we do use occasionally, uh, and certainly I'd say most of the time, for extensive adhesions or adhesions in the top of the uterus, a little triangular balloon. And you can see this is really tiny. Um, we put it in through the cervix. Uh, and we don't really blow it up, but this acts as a barrier so that the surface of the uterus can heal before um, we take it out. Typically, we'll leave it in for a week to 10 days. Um, just because of the mechanics, this is very difficult to insert it in the office. So if I think we're going to want to use a balloon, I'll do that in the operating room, too. Mm -hmm. When would you do repeat hysteroscopies versus using a balloon? Well. First of all, um, after we take, if we have extensive disease, after we take out the balloon, several weeks we'll do a repeat hysteroscopy. And I, there's not a lot of data. There, is, there have been small prospective studies which evaluate this where we, we can see it makes a difference. But basically, imagine if you had burned your hands. You were in the jungle, and they bandaged it, and you came out a month later. All your hands were glued together. Well. You have surgery that frees them up, and then what do you do? Bandage them again? No, you go. You move them every day. Mm -hmm. You wiggle them, or they're going to stick together again. Well, how do we prevent that? Um, we can't wiggle your, the inside of your uterus, so it inv involves putting an instrument through the cervix, and wiggling it around, or a lot more accurately, a hysteroscope. So. Um, I'm pretty aggressive if we treat significant adhesions and looking again a week, possibly two weeks, before these become firm scar tissue where it's just sticky and usually they're very easy to separate. Um, the risks are very low and if we do it in the office, it's not a terribly expensive uh, proposition. Now, if someone has a few simple little adhesions, especially in the lower portion of the uterus, then typically we may not need to do that. Okay. So that kind of describes how difficult or easy it can be to treat the different grades, or would you like to maybe explain that a little bit more in depth? Sure. If, first of all, the easiest to treat and the most satisfying is someone with no periods, and we see nice lining of the uterus and endometrium on an ultrasound, and we basically pop through a little barrier near the opening of the uterus, right near the cervix, and that cures it. It may come back in a week or two and pass a small probe just to make sure it doesn't stick together. And then you have a normal uterus, the area where the baby implants, the fallopian tubes, those are all normal, so I love that. Mm -hmm. And that would be silly to go to the operating room for. Uh, next, maybe just some simple little adhesions. They may be fairly dense, but they're in the middle and there's normal tissue above that. And I can show you that in a video, okay. one we just did uh, a week or two ago. Okay. And. It's a few snips with the scissors. Again, simple to do in the office. Uh, why would you want to go to the operating room? The most extensive adhesions where it's really scarred, you see little or no endometrium. That's the lining of the uterus. Uh, on ultrasound, or you know it's way up near the tubes, and you just have sort of like a little hollow cylinder, not a cavity. Those I'm going to do in the operating room. We may very well want to put a laparoscope in, a little telescope through the belly button to look at the top, uh, even though ultrasound is being used more and more. Uh, those we know that we're going to have a balloon. And they can be extremely uh, difficult. Often multiple, multiple procedures are needed, and the results are not great. And then certainly if someone's had the uh, problems where someone has used a resectoscope uh, treat, let's say remove fibroids or whatever, and there's a lot of scarring, they may have removed all of the bottom layer of the lining, the base the basal layer, and then there's really nothing that can regrow, and that's a pretty difficult situation. Right, which is what has occurred with me, unfortunately. Um, is it important to have a doctor who specializes in Asherman's, or can any doctor perform a hysteroscopy? Well, first of all, it's not a specialty per se, but there are people who do lots and lots of hysteroscopic surgery and are very good at it. It's like playing a musical instrument. Anyone can play the violin, but to make it sound good um, takes doing it every day. I, I think it's definitely worth seeking out someone who's doing this on a regular basis. Yeah, I agree. 
And that's all of our information that we got from Dr. Inman about Asherman syndrome today. For more information about Asherman's, you could go to Asherman's.org or Dr. Inman's website, which is www.egyn.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.